Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Uh, today we're headed out for an outdoor painting plain air adventure, I hope. Uh, I, I hope because I've been trying to do this for about five or six weeks now and I've had uh, all kinds of technical, it's a technical, it's a technical troubles. Uh, the painting outings themselves have worked out fine. Uh, even some of the paintings actually came out uh, okay, so that's always pleasant. Uh, but on the camera and, and sound side, things have been a little bit iffy. Uh, or uh, not iffy, they just didn't happen. I've had every problem under the sun. Uh, re recording audio with no video, video with no audio. Sometimes they record just a little tiny bit and then stop recording, uh, even though the red light was on. It, it does coincide a little bit with uh, an Apple software update, so maybe that's tied to it a little bit. I've changed nothing on my end. The first videos I posted on YouTube was with the same setup. Uh, so it's been very hard to figure out. But long story short, I just wasn't getting footage and uh, nothing I could use anyway. So uh, we're headed out today. I'm, I've reset the phone uh, several times. I've got new apps I'm trying, so I'm optimistic and I'm, I'm crossing brushes and fingers that this is gonna pan out. Uh, so, uh, and we're heading out to a barn I mean, I've painted this barn three times now for you guys trying to get this done. So I'm, I'm actually starting to get very obsessive and kind of manic about trying to get this barn done. So actually three and a half times, if I'm being honest, because I went out a couple of days ago and there was, uh, just as I was leaving the, the house, uh, the phones blew up with a tornado <laughs> warning. So, I mean, it starts to get ridiculous after a while. I was like, man, this part does not want to get painted. This is just a cursed project. But uh, I thought, you know what, I, I could probably do it because we have a very large uh, landmass based city here in Calgary. So the tornado warning was up in the north end of the city and I'm in the far south. You know, that's how stubborn I'm getting. I just thought, oh, I, I'm going to try it anyway. So I, I went out, I did get all set up and uh, the winds weren't great, uh, but they were just getting <laughs> insanely bad as I started to paint. And I, at one point I was actually, I pulled all the equipment in and I'm, I'm tucked into the back of the Jeep here under the hatch, trying to get this thing done. And uh, it was just impossible, blew the easel over twice. And, and once I can handle twice, I was like, this is ridiculous. Your obsession knows no bounds, but I think you need to call it quits today. You need to tap out. So uh, so we're trying again today now. And uh, I'm, uh, I just wiped that panel down and we're gonna reuse it today. Uh, so I, I'm hoping that we're, we're watching this all together on a nicely uh, edited video that's actually on YouTube. Uh, so wish me, wish me luck. And if you like what I'm doing uh, with the channel on that note, and want to help support me and help me grow this channel, uh, please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like and bell buttons. Hitting those buttons actually bumps me in YouTube's algorithm because uh, it shows audience engagement, so that helps all of a lot. Thank you very much for that, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all in the next video. Hopefully. <laughs>this is a footage that I took of this location on the tornado day I uh, thought you'd like to see where I was painting uh, when the clouds aren't there you can see the mountains in the background it's pretty much a 360 view uh, you can kind of tell the winds are pretty gusty at this point but uh, about 10 minutes after this when I was setting up to paint uh, that's when all hell broke loose huh. okay so I'm just gonna take a minute to talk about plein air painting itself uh, because every artist I know has uh, subtly different goals for plein air. Uh, and if I explain where I'm coming from, I hope you'll get a little bit more out of the video. Uh, so my goals in, in plein air painting are to be as efficient as I possibly can be uh, at capturing the scene and being as faithful to the scene as I can be. Uh, so I limit myself to about 30 or 45 minutes at the most on a sunny day like this in the field per painting. And so I'm looking for good drawing, like accurate shapes, perspective proportions within those shapes, how those shapes are structuring the compositional uh, flavor of the painting. I'm looking to be as accurate with the colors and the temperatures and values of those colors that I can be. And if I observe something fleeting, I want to be as efficient as humanly possible at capturing that. And so that time constraint is forcing me to start doing that. 
Uh, the downside is you can panic if you put that kind of time on yourself. And the way around that is to understand that it's not a finished, uh, resolved, um, sophisticated painting you're looking for. Uh, I'll post the finished painting in a second and you'll notice it's quite raw. It's, it's not a sophisticated painting, it's, but it's accurate. It's given me information, it's taught me how this scene looks. But more for me, it's taught me how it feels. I'm out here smelling the canola fields. Uh, they're brilliantly beautiful. You can see them sort of behind me there. But they also have this aroma that's just incredible. It's uh, July 31st here in Calgary, 30 degrees. There's a beautiful breeze that's uh, preventing me from melting in that heat. Birds are playing around with me. Uh, I just had a dragonfly on my hand a minute ago. These are the things that are feeding my painting. This exper I'm experiencing it as I'm painting it. Uh, now, a lot of artists, uh, and myself included, use your field study or your plein air painting and a photographic reference in combination uh, to sort of maybe work in the studio on a larger piece or a piece that you want to be more refined or more sophisticated and I think that's a good practice I enjoy that I find that a different challenge though because that photo does sort of insert itself and the photo does lack this it just lacks this so so if you're just new to plein air painting congratulations for, for uh, hopping on board you're gonna have a ball and find a goal for yourself in fact let me know in the comments below what your goals for your painting are you've heard my goal for plein air painting what, what would your goal be uh, let me know I'd love to hear that in the meantime if you're looking at uh, YouTube videos as a way of learning how to paint better that's terrific and I congratulate you on that as well there's a lot of really fantastic artists on this channel I mean on this platform on this channel yeah on this channel they're very good artists uh, but on the platform they are very very good artists all, all across the board and you're gonna learn but just bear one principal thing in mind as you move forward that uh, nothing is gonna teach you to paint better than painting itself and here is the famous barn. Uh, I hope uh, you enjoy it as much as I do, and it was worth coming up here uh, four to five times to get it painted for you. Uh, now, starting out, I, I usually begin uh, my paintings with a Gamsol linseed uh, mixture, especially on a hot day like this and on a panel, uh, because the paint can be a little chalky otherwise. So this just helps get it flowing a little bit and just makes it a little easier to get the block in moving. Uh, and this is a bad mistake that I've just done here. Uh, I should not be talking while I'm, I'm painting. That's, uh, ooh, yeah, we're going to get rid of that. Uh, this is a classic case of uh, do as I say maybe than what I'm doing. Uh, so I wanted to include uh, that little bit of broken fence. I knew that before I even started. Um, and uh, I already had a clear idea of what I wanted to do, which meant that the barn has to be a little smaller in the composition. Uh, so you see this is so much better. So the lesson is don't be touching uh, your painting with a paintbrush unless you have a clear uh, idea of what you're intending to do and and you're going to be prepared to pay attention. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that's got to be corrected. Uh, now this is feeling about a thousand times better. Uh, this is this is much better. Um, the compositional flow is good. I, I like the low center of gravity for it. So yeah, we're, we're on the right path now. Uh, so you know what? Lesson learned and we'll just reset and uh, move forward uh, and pay attention and know what we're trying to do. <laughs> All right, on with the show.
So at one spot, it has that little reflection. The yellow, the greenish yellow under that eaves. So that's the part I want to kind of try to tickle into right now. That's the kind of information I want to record uh, for sure. I don't like that at all. Let's just do a, okay. Well, let's scrape it off and start again. There. Okay, we're gonna try that one more time. made for me. This thing is so amazing that I can actually move the easel. This cam, this board is in here so tight. <laughs> All right, enough tomfoolery. Take one. <laughs> yeah, just uh, talk naturally to the camera. <laughs> Hey everybody! It's always so hard to figure out how to open a video. Oh, oh please! <laughs> Hello everyone! Take about 42. Today on Doug Levis Painting Challenge, we're gonna see if he survives. 